Hi everybody, Praz here. Welcome to my showcase of my 28mm Late Romans. Uh, I wanted to talk very much about multi-use armies and for those new to the hobby or those experienced in the hobby just perhaps thinking a little bit more when we paint up an army of different rule sets that where we can utilize the same figures uh, and get more use out of all that hard work we put into uh, putting these armies together uh, both the painting the basing the research etc so just a little video uh, to talk a little bit about um, how you might be able to use uh, some late Romans in this case um, or Romans per se uh, to utilize various rule sets that are available out there across the hobby at the moment so a couple of years ago um, I decided that I wanted to paint up a late Roman saga army uh, saga um, the rules published by gripping beast and studio tomahawk and there's been many reiterations of it um, but atius and alpha was the book that i was using at the time and i wanted to uh, paint myself up a force uh, to give myself a good starting army uh, in terms of points uh, as far as that was concerned so um, the first thing I needed to do was have a look at what were the best places to go for the figures and I decided Perry's and Gripping Beast uh, were probably my first port of call and in, ter in, in, in fact most of these figures are uh, plastic Gripping Beast um, and there are some Perry's and I believe some Foundries uh, mixed in with these as well um, so uh, I will show you a setup um, shortly of uh, my initial points for Aetis and Arthur. So the figures um, were based on tuppences, as you can see here. And the figures themselves, um, each base uh, was undercoated in a brown, uh, your choice. And then um, I used PVA glue to put some scatter mix, um, painted over the scatter mix in the same brown, dry brushed uh, buff and, and lighter sort of colours on top, and then applied uh, using some watered down PVA, um, some grass, scatter grass mix on the top of the base. I you can see that very well. Um, and then um, four mil. Uh, grass tufts were used um, and super glued onto each uh, base. Okay, um, obviously at the front here you can see the archers, at the back you can see some of the warriors. So again, just picking up a random uh, warrior here. Let's put it in there. Um, so the shields are the obvious thing. These are little big men studio transfers. Uh, so you paint the, the shield in a base colour like a white and then put the transfer on and they give a fabulous effect. The, the shields, top quality shields, really, really good. Often use them for these sort of scales. Uh, my painting is what I would call war game standard. Uh, I'm not a professional painter. Um, so to get that effect with the shields is fantastic. And I love looking at them on the battlefield and when they're deployed on the table. As I say, um, initially I bought these figures with the view to doing a saga army. And then the more I thought about it, um, and, and, and with a number of the armies I've already got painted up, I started thinking about how I could use multiple rule sets with the same figures. So um, I'll show you shortly um, how I had the saga configuration set up, although of course that can be mixed and matched. Also for Ducks Britannicarum. I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, by Two Fat Lardies, uh, as a Romano British force. Uh, I appreciate for all of those out there, uh, you know, uh, experienced uh, war gamers. These are not Romano British uh, figures, but they will pass for that. Um, 
my view is as long as your figures are painted it, it doesn't matter um, you know if it allows you to get on the table and have some fun then why not and we've had some really good games with those that set of rules um, my friend has got a, a Saxon force and uh, they're a fabulous little game um, likewise I've used it for to the strongest using the grid system um, and again I'll show you how that can work sword and spear um, you know there's lots of lots of different options there in terms of what you can do with the figures okay for the saga Aetius and Arthur army then we have the following uh, troops that we were able to put together from the painted army. Uh, so we've got four foot hearth guard here, one unit. Uh, at the back, we've got a unit of four mounted hearth guards. And then over the other side, uh, we've got another unit of four hearth guard. Coming forward, we've got a unit of 12 levy. Uh, with the uh, unit of levy manu ballista option uh, that's quite an exciting little weapon to use that one in a saga game and then uh, our bread and butter troops we've got uh, two units of eight warriors armed with bows and two units of foot based uh, ordinary warriors as well so when you put the total force together as it is currently, um, you know, it gives you lots and lots of options for Saga. Um, you've probably got in the region of eight, eight to ten points of options there. Um, any of those units, I've got various command figures within those which I could use as a warlord. Um, so yeah, lots of options for Saga there. And of course the new Saga rules um, these could be used in some of those sets as well. So set up for a mock uh, Romano-British Ducks Britannic Arum Force. Uh, again for the purists, uh, I appreciate these are not the exact figures, but again just to demonstrate the multiple use of the same forces so two units of six levies with a noble and a champion four archers skirmishers two units of six warriors with a noble and the unit of elite fighters uh, with a noble as well um, so just another um, example of how you can use the same forces So again, another setup of the same forces for to the strongest using a gridded mat. This is a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter uh, mat that would normally be used in the club for our six mil games, um, of which we have various six mil forces. But this is just to show you it in a slightly different format using the 28 mil Romans. Utilising uh, two archer figures as light infantry at the front here in one grid. Uh, Roman artillery would be another unit. Then line archer units represented by four figures. And then warrior stroke legionary units or auxiliary uh, six man units. Uh, this one has an attached general. Um, and the same at the back with an attached general and then um, a cavalry unit. So again, um, another way of setting yourself up for various rule sets uh, in various formats. There is nothing to say that you couldn't also adapt these Roman figures for Infamy Infamy, another two fat lardy set. Again, I appreciate uh, they're not the right type of Romans for those purists out there. But again, uh, they're painted, who says they can't be used. Um, and if it enables you to get on the table with a force quicker, have some fun, try out some new rules, then why not? 
So I hope uh, this showcase um, of these figures that I've got has given people some ideas on maybe looking at their own armies and how they can utilise uh, existing forces or start new small armies up and how they can utilise them across various rule sets. Uh, I'll be doing some more showcases uh, over the coming weeks and months of some of my other existing armies and again I'd, I will touch on perhaps how I've adapted those and used them within various rule sets that are out there at the moment. Um, have fun, keep rolling lucky and I'll see you soon.